Greetings and welcome to Our Daily Timothy Time. My name is Carl Coates and it's a privilege, pleasure and an absolute joy to be with you once again with an Open King James Bible. Doing a, uh, a topical message, message today, one that I've titled, Who Killed Goliath and What Does It Mean for My Child? Now, now you're probably thinking, Carl, that's an action-packed title and it is indeed. So we, uh, we've got a bit of ground to cover today so that you... Uh, you can, you, you'll understand my title in a few moments. Before I get into today's message, uh, two things. Number one, in the description box down below, there's some interesting links. Please take the time to have a look at them. You'll be glad that you did. Number two, if you are a returning viewer to this channel, welcome and thank you very much for, for, for listening in. Can I ask you, have you subscribed to this channel yet? If you haven't, please consider doing that and pressing the bell so you can be notified of further messages that come out. And if you are a first timer here today, welcome. Glad to have you here. I hope it's it's a profitable time for you. I'm sure it will be. And if you do have any questions, the comment box is open. Please leave a comment down below. Whether you agree, disagree, whatever your thoughts are, I would love to hear from you in the comment box down below. Right, let's get into it. Um, if you've got a clean sheet of paper, a sharp pencil, and an open King James Bible, let's get into the study. If you are driving and you're listening to this on uh, with your headset on, uh, I understand that you can't go to your Bible, but just listen and enjoy it. When you get home to your own personal study, just have a look at the verses and uh, consider what is being said today. Remember, you and I, when, whenever we listen to anybody, when you listen to me, you don't automatically believe me. I'm not your final authority. Your King James Bible in our, in, in our English language is. You just take whatever you hear from any preacher, you take it back to the Word of God, and you go and prove it. You go see if it's so. Right, um, 1 Samuel chapter 17. That's where I want to start off today. 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read the first nine verses to set the stage. So let's get into it. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered at Sechor, which belonged to Judah, and pitched between Sechor and Azekah in Ephsdanimin. I hope I got that right. Verse 2. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in the ray against the Philistines. Verse 3. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. Now, verse 4 is quite important. In fact, it's very important because it establishes something. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. Now, verse 5, 6, and 7 explain that this guy didn't exactly have little noodle arms and he wasn't a pipsqueak. This guy was a giant. Verse 5. And he had an, an helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. Gentle listener, I don't know about you, but when I just read that phrase, 5,000 shekels, that just sounds expensive. That just sounds heavy. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in kilograms or pounds, whatever conversion system you use, but uh, that's some that's heavy. Verse six, and he had greaves of brass upon, uh, uh, upon his legs, and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed six hundred shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went out before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. And if he be able to fight with me and kill me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Verse 10, And the Philistine, Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all, all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Folks, 
gentle listener, come with me over to verse 45. Fast forward to verse 30, 45. Let's read the, what David said. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come unto thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear. For the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine on his forehead. Okay, so, and, this, and it goes on to say in the verse, that the stone, the stone sunk into his forehead. Do you know how hard David must have flung that stone uh, onto his forehead? And he fell upon his face on the earth. Verse 50. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Verse 51. Therefore. That word therefore is a beautiful word. Our apostle Paul uses that quite a bit over in, in the epistles written to us. That being Romans to Philemon. Verse back to verse 51. Therefore David ran and, and stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Right. So we've just read the account there that David killed Goliath. Now. My purpose statement going into this message today, when I sat down and thought about this message, I, I want to inform, and not only inform, but persuade any listener that's listening to me today that's, that's, that's having a challenging time with what version of the Bible uh, should they be reading, should they buy their kids. Uh, so I want to inform and persuade my listener that's dealing with that issue, if, you, if you're dealing with that issue, that the New American Standard Bible, which we're going to look at now, we're going to run some verses in now, gives a false account of who killed Goliath. Therefore, it is a corrupt version which simply cannot be trusted. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, that's a heavy statement. Yes, it is. And I stand by it wholeheartedly. Why did I choose the New American Standard Bible? Why didn't I say all modern versions? Well, in my mind, I'm thinking all modern versions. Of course I am. But for me personally, I never started out with the King James Bible. I started out in 1990. I got given a, an NKJV, a New King James Bible. And then about 10 years on from there, another family member gave me a brand new uh, a copy of the New American Standard Bible. And it was at that time, which was roughly about 20 odd years ago, 20 plus years ago, that I was attending, or just started attending a Pentecostal church. So I had this, the, 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 the NKJV, the new, new King James Bible, and I had a copy of the New American Standard Bible. I put the, the New King James Bible aside and I used, when I went to uh, uh, the Bible study, the, the home groups, the home cell groups, church on a Sunday morning or Sunday evening, depending on which one I went to, sometimes I went to both, I used to tout, I used to take my, my New American Standard Bible with me. Now, what I understand in the Word of God, rightly divided now, uh, understanding the unique apostleship of Paul, is that I fell into that category of being uh, uh, what Paul calls ignorant brethren. Okay, I would not have thee be ignorant brethren. Six times Paul says that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 37, I think it is. Uh, Paul, Paul says this. In fact, if you've got your Bible there, well, I'll read it to you. So if, you, if you're driving or if you don't have access to a Bible, I'll read it to you now. 1 Corinthians 14 uh, uh, um, uh, verse 37 if any man thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord verse 38 but if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant 
um, uh, come with me to Romans, Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1, verse 13. Now, this is the first of six times that Paul uses this phrase. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. So I fell into that category of being an ignorant brother, an ignorant brethren. The big thing was uh, I didn't uh, um, I didn't distinguish the difference uh, between the the prophetic kingdom program and the mystery that was revealed to Paul. That's the big uh, distinction in Scripture, and I didn't see that. I believe that the church, the body of Christ, at that time when when I was a Pentecost, I believe that it started, that the body of Christ started at Acts two at Pentecost. I now understand by, by, by studying the Word of God, rightly divided and comparing Scripture with Scripture, reading the Bible literally, uh, and, 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 and believing the words on the page, that the church, the body of Christ, started in Acts 9, not Acts 2. Anyway, that, let me get back to the, my, my point today. Is that uh, uh, being ignorant, I went to church in those days at the, at the Pentecostal outfit that I went to with a New American Standard Bible, I was ignorant. I did not, number one, I did not read for myself. I barely ever read the Bible. I went there out of emotionalism. I went there because it was the right thing to do. I mean, I've always believed in God. Um, um, and I, and I, if you want to hear my testimony, it's actually up on this channel. I, 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 it's up there. Let me not digress and go down that road. But um, uh, I, I, I I was saved when I was a Pentecostalist. Um, I'd already trusted that Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried and rose again the third day. Um, but I got I got led astray. I was ignorant. I did not, number one, I did not read the scripture. Whatever the man in the pulpit said, I believed him. I believed that he was anointed. He was, he was the spokesman for God and that I could bring nothing to the table. I just listened to him and nodded my head. Yes, sir. No, sir. Three bags full, sir. Let me pay you your 10% at the end of each month in the form of, in inverted commas, tithing. I was a religious, ignorant brethren. That's what I was. And, and um, I didn't read. And number two, uh, uh, not only did I not read the scripture, which I, which we, Paul in Romans 12, that's the first time, you, you know, uh, um, uh, renew your mind. How do you do that? You read God's word. Where? Romans to Philemon, right? Uh, so I, I, number two, I always followed men, the traditions of man, whatever the man in the pulpit said, whatever the deacon said, whatever the hierarchy of the church said, what the church doctrinal, not that I even understood what that was at the time. Th that was my authority, not the word of God, not the word of God, let alone in the King James Bible. So that was my problem. Now, had I been reading my New American Standard Bible, I would have read what I'm going to read to you now. Okay, I'm going to take you to 2 Samuel chapter 21 in the New American Standard Bible. And I'm going to read to you who, who the New American Standard Bible says killed Goliath. Okay, then I'm going to take you over to the King James Version and read you what God's infallible word preserved through a multiplicity of copies down through the ages into your hands, into my hands today. In the English language, it's in the form of a King James Bible. I'm going to read to you what the King James Bible says, and I want you to see the difference. And then we're going to conclude. Okay, so had I been reading, had I ignored what the man in the, in the pulpit said and read for myself, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, Okay, study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. If I was, if I was, uh, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm getting pretty passionate here. Let me slow down and get to the verse. Come with me to Second Samuel. Second Samuel. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this from the New American Standard Bible. I want you to hear this, and I want you to consider it. And then we'll, we'll come to the conclusion, the point I'm driving home with you today. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter, what did I say? Chapter 21. I'm busy turning in now. Okay. Now, obviously, if you've got the time, read the, 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 chap the, the chapter. You know, read the book, read the chapter, get the context, get, see what's going on. Okay. But I want to draw your attention in the New American Standard Bible to 2 Samuel chapter 21. Verse 19, and this has got to do with the issue of who killed Goliath. 
Let me read. And there was war with the Philistines again at Gob. And Alhanan, the son of Jar, Jaregim, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, the shaft of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. We just read about the that weaver's beam just, just a little while ago in 1 Samuel 17, didn't we? Okay, so according to the New American Standard Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19, David did not kill Goliath. Now let's read that same account in the King James Bible. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 19. And I read, And there was again a battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jareoregim, a Bethlehemite, slew the brother of Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Now, did you pick that up? Slew the brother of. Now, that's in italics. Which just goes to show that I, you need I, the italics. Now, it, italics in manuscript evidence is a wonderful topic. We'll cover that another time. But you see, it's the, he killed the brother of Goliath. According to the New American Standard Bible, uh, Alhanan killed Goliath. Now, we know that David killed Goliath because we read it in the King James Bible. I hope you can see that the New American Standard Bible is a corrupted version and it cannot be trusted. There are, I'm going to say this, there, this is not the only place in the New American Standard Bible. There are many other different places I could take you to. It is not my intent to do that today. I wanted to look at David and Goliath. Because when you're at Sunday school, David and Goliath is one of those stories that that. Bible teachers teach the little juniors at Sunday school. And uh, where I'm going with today's message is, who killed Goliath? Well, we've just seen that David killed Goliath. And the New American Standard Bible says that somebody else killed Goliath, not David. And what does this, now here's the, here's the whole point of my message today. What does that mean for my child? I'm a father of two. What does that mean? What is this implication in the New American Standard Bible and my King James Bible? What they tell me of, of who killed Goliath. The, 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 the New American Standard Bible in one, it tells me that somebody else, David didn't kill Goliath. If you go in the New American Standard Bible, if you go back to uh, first, first, um, first Samuel chapter 17, first ch ch uh, Daniel chapter 17, I'm going to turn there quickly. It'll tell you that, that David killed Goliath. It does. But then in, in, in second Samuel, it tells you that Elhanan killed Goliath. That leaves you doubting. And that is exactly what the yea hath God said society is all about. Satan was doing that in the Garden of Eden with Eve. You want to go study out what God instructed Adam? Then you want to go and study out what Eve said back to the serpent. Study that out. It's, the, it's, what, it's what is known as the yea hath God said society. Satan wants to cause doubt. And, and that is exactly what the New American Standard Bible is going to do with its reader. It's going to cause you to doubt. And it, it, it flat out lies at the same time. So, the, so what has this got to do with my child? Gentle listener, if you've got children and you don't know what Bible to buy them, the world is going to say out there and Christendom at large is going to tell you, get a modern version, it's easier, get, it, get, get this version, get that version. That's malarkey. You get your child a King James Bible and, and, and father, if, you, if you're a dad listening to me now, it's our job. I know it's hard sometimes. I know. 
I'm not talking down at you. I'm looking at you eye to eye. As brothers in Christ, look, it's tough sometimes, but you and I have got to sit down and read the King James, but if they're English speaking, to them. My kids speak Norwegian and English, right? And my daughter, my eldest one, she's got a copy of the King James Bible. Now, when we read together, I don't read out of mine. I read out of hers to her. Now, there are long, hard, expensive words in the King James Bible, but they, that causes us to study and it's my job as a father to explain to her. I can use verses to explain those words. Sometimes I'll use a dictionary. But it's, you know, um, it, it causes us to study. And, you know, the King James Bible, the level, the, uh, oh, oh, I'm getting carried away. The, 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 it's not hard. It's not, let me just put it like that. This is not my intention to, to teach you all about the King James Bible now. There's a, two beautiful links down below by Pastor Brian Ross. Um, there's two books there that I, I really, please click on them, buy them. If you've got money after paying your bills, please investigate them if you are interested in finding out about the King James Bible. And you'll be glad that you did. Anyway, so uh, um, yeah, there are some hard words. Absolutely there are. But that's what we study. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. My conclusion to you is, who killed Goliath? The King James Bible tells us exactly who did. And there's no doubt about it. The New American Standard Bible is going to cause you to doubt and question God's word. That's exactly what the satanic policy of evil wants you to be. That's where it wants you to be. The King James Bible is going to, it's going to tell you directly, David killed Goliath. No questions asked. It's on the page. God, it, it's written there in, in, in the, the objective standard, God's, uh, um, God's word that was settled in heaven, that is settled in heaven, as the Psalms tell us. And, and, it, and, and, and here's my question to you. If you're struggling in your mind, what Bible to buy my child? And it's a real struggle, okay? You know, the pastor telling you one thing and the elders are telling you this. Other moms and dads are telling you about this and that and the next thing. Listen, I'm telling you now from this ministry to you. If you're struggling, buy your child a King James Bible. Would you knowingly give your child, now that you've seen that, that, that corrupt version, would you knowingly buy them a New American Standard, in inverted commas, Bible? Would you? You don't have to answer that. You know in your heart what you would do. If you have any questions from today's message, like I said earlier, please leave a comment in the comment box down below. I trust this was of help to you. There are other uh, doctrines that I'd like to talk about, but it's not, it, it's not in, my, in my purpose statement to cover that today. Maybe another time. Also, I do want to say this. This, uh, uh, this channel... At the moment, we are, and it, we have done for a while now, and will be, if the Lord tarries, for a good while still. We are studying through the book of Romans at the moment. We are in Romans chapter 1 at, at present. Uh, we're going into Romans chapter 1, verse 3. Um, please, if you are interested in, uh, in, in finding out how to get established in the faith, as our Apostle Paul wants us to be. The book of Romans is where you start out. Not John, not 1 John, not anywhere else in the Bible, but the book of Romans. Uh, and in a, in a good while, if the Lord tarries, we're going to get to Romans chapter 3, and there's the doctrine of the faith of Christ. We're going to cover that. That's another one that the New American Standard Bible absolutely leaves out. And if you leave out the doctrine of the faith of Christ, there's problems. There's major problems. Anyway, <sighs> let, me, let, me, let me wind it in a little bit here. It's been a pleasure to have this uh, short time into looking in God's word, uh, looking at this issue of who killed Goliath and looking at the Bible version issues. It's important. Anyway, till we meet next time, keep your sword sharp, soldier. Grace and peace to you, Maranatha.